I'm here today with Dr. Simi Silver. Uh, she's a dentist in Ottawa. And, um, you know, I just wanted to ask you a couple questions. Um, so first of all, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. So um, I'm in this whole mode of interviewing because I'm kind of, you know, I'm a journalist, right? So I have to be kind of a, a journalistic type of interviewer, right? But okay. anyways, um, yeah, you know, so I wanted to ask you, I mean, what is it that you're really passionate about with your practice? I, I like to uh, focus on airway and breathing to make sure that the that our patients are feeling their best health because it's often overlooked and uh, to make sure that the work that we do is going to last. Oh, okay. So, and do you work with all ages or, I mean, is there... Absolutely. You... Yep, we oh, start okay. with infants and we evaluate and release tongue tie and all the way up to whatever age for tongue tie release and for airway management, right? So airway management sounds like, what does that mean, right? But basically it's making sure you have lots of room for air to get inside your body, down your windpipe. And that has a lot to do with a lot of different disciplines, but we are the ones who are gonna look in your mouth all the time and can screen for these problems. Oh, okay, so then like if someone, for instance, needed a CPAP machine, I mean, you would refer them or they would, or they, get a sleep study or something like that or so we actually need to we can't diagnose sleep apnea that's the job of the sleep physician okay. and because there's lots of sleep disorders could be anything and we can though with working with the sleep physician we can order the sleep studies recommend that they have a sleep study and that's from our screening I've never been told that no you know so usually the person actually needs the sleep study and then once they have a diagnosis depending on their diagnosis and uh, comorbidities, other things going on, they could have a CPAP, which would be um, delivered by a separate company, or they can see a dentist who has qualifications to be able to measure and custom make a properly titrated oral appliance for them. Okay. Now I'm, I'm just curious. Moving parts, which is nice. Yeah. Really. No, has the industry, I mean, has it, has there been any advancements, you know, in the industry as far oh, yeah. as since know. when? Every day, it's ah. a it's a constantly changing, right? There's tons of research going on. It's not like a rare condition. So there's lots and lots of research going on all the time about sleep. You know, you can go online and find so many websites devoted just to getting better sleep and sleep apnea, mm -hmm. and it's it's not um, well publicized though people don't seem to know the dentist could help you with a simple appliance which hmm. is kind of blowing my mind i'm like i i knew that since i was in dental school how come not everybody knows that right but hey hmm. not everybody went to dental school i get it but i just thought that was common knowledge just like i would know about the yeah. cpap so oh. i'm on a mission now to educate people so if you don't like your cpap call up your uh, local qualified dentist yeah, I never even realized that there was an appliance. I mean, I've I've heard of you know TMJ, you know, like bite guards basically, or right. you know, it would help with grinding. But I, I hadn't heard of an appliance, you know, for uh, for sleep, you know, for airway management. So that's kind of interesting. Okay. Is it made the same way as you would make like a night guard or something it like that? Be. It can be right. So there's lots of different night guards now. Oh, okay. Maybe you're not aware of that. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you were a lab technician, right? A dental lab I technician? I was, right. Yeah. So they do all, they mill them, they print them, they can do them out of nylon, they can do them out of anything you want, right? So uh, when you ask me what kinds, where do I start? <laughs> sure. Right? So you really have to know the different types and you have to know your patient. And then it depends. Like, let's say they have some teeth here, but no teeth here. You know, mm. things like that, right? Because the appliance has to sit on teeth, right? Mm. So we have to evaluate and make sure everything like that is going to be comfortable. And actually, the TMJ is part and parcel. So in fact, when you mention night guards, mm. whenever somebody gets told, oh, you need a night guard, you're grinding, you mm. need to screen them for sleep because oh. grinding can indicate a sleep disordered breathing problem. So mm. that could be one of the problems, right? Oh, That's indicating okay. that actually, and they don't know it. Most mm. people who have sleep problems with their breathing at night, mm. oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. My sleep is fine. So actually, I, I just i am um, quite excited about I'm promoting somebody else's thing here. If you go to something called empowered sleep apnea, 
you'll find the funniest thing you've ever seen by a doctor and a psychologist. And they even have a really goofy song, Empowered, Sleep Apnea, right? I won't sing it for you because it's not any better when I do it. But they also have uh, cartoons that the doctor has drawn since, you know, probably teenage years and stuff. And he talks about exactly that, right? Because people are overwhelmed. Oh, my God, I'm what? What do you mean I have a sleep disorder? What is sleep apnea? What's that? And then they have to wear this thing on their head. There has to be a little bit more information for people is what he felt. And I thousand percent agree with him in the sense, especially, I mean, he's, he's seen way more patients than I'll ever see as a sleep physician for sleep. Mm-hmm. And he says the biggest problem is how to evaluate what to do. People mm-hmm. don't understand the risk. Do you understand the risk of sleep apnea even? Or even sleep well, disordered breathing? Well, I you know, know that um, the biggest thing is the high blood pressure, right? That it causes, you know what I mean? Well, that's one thing. The biggest Mm. problem is that you're not taking in enough oxygen. Oh, okay. You're just not getting enough oxygen. Like one of the key indicators that you have a sleep disordered breathing problem is during the night, your O2 sats will drop. Oh, right, right. Drop. Yeah. You're toxic. Yeah. You You got problems everywhere. You got blood pressure, you got heart problems, you got everything problems. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you have to manage point. the risk is the basic thing is what he starts at. And he calls oh. it the island of sleep apnea. And he, he likens, um, he has a podcast and he talks about how, and it's a good comparison, you know, here's, here's your sleep apnea, right? It's like going to Ikea and getting a big box and it's full mm. of all these parts and nobody knows what to do with it and what it is and how to put mm. it together. I'm not saying me as a provider, it takes a, it takes a whole collaboration of providers, but people who right. get the diagnosis, that's often the case. 